Happy Mother's Day, everyone. I want to talk to you this week about Gustav Klimt, who was a, a symbolist painter. And we've talked about symbolism before in the context of Paul Gauguin. Klimt was the first president of uh, a movement known as the Vienna Secession, which was initiated by a group of artists in 1897. It was an avant-garde movement that began in, in Austria. And the, the Austrian Academy of the Arts, which was known as the, the Vienna Klusterhaus, emphasized, like many academies, the academic or historic tradition over innovation. So there was this sort of attitude among the younger artists that the, the academy was confining itself traditions that were not really of interest to this younger generation. So that was really the, the impetus behind this Vienna Secession. And the movement itself was not typified by a single style. As I said, Klimt himself was a symbolist. But the secession also included realists, naturalists, and other schools of art as well. So when we're looking at some of these um, paintings today, and we're going to look mostly at, at Klimt's most famous painting, keep in mind that as a symbolist, Klimt was working with what was really a rejection of realism based on the premise that art isn't intended to emulate nature and that universal truths could really only be described through art and indirectly. So, for instance, through non-mimetic or non-typical or naturalist uses of color. Klimt himself was sort of an unusual person. Um, he was sort of considered to be a bit licentious, I'd say. Um, he lived, at the same time, a, a very solitary existence. He lived with his family, um, his mother and unmarried sisters, for a good portion of his life. And you can see here how he would typically dress. He would just wear this robe without any underwear or any other clothing on underneath. So we'll look at what I think is probably unarguably Klimt's most famous piece, and that would be, of course, The Kiss, which was painted between 1907 and 1908. This is oil on canvas embellished with gold leaf, which is usually what gives a lot of Klimt's paintings their characteristic gilded appearance. This canvas is particularly interesting because it's actually a perfect square. And the amalgamation of styles that we see here is also interesting. We've got these relatively ornate robes here, which are worn by both the male figure here and then the female figure as well. And the styles are noticeably Art Nouveau, which we've talked about before. And the Art Nouveau movement was, in fact, pretty intimately connected with the origins of the Vienna Secession. But there's also some remnants here of the, the older arts and crafts patterns, which were more typical of the late 19th century. Now, despite the kind of cutesy reputation that this painting has, it's typically considered by art critics to be more remarkable for its sexual imagery. Klimt himself actually had several illegitimate children, and as I we were stating before, his habits were a little bit unusual. And while the painting is intended to be erotic, Klimt intended for the painting to be interpreted that way, it's interesting to see that the way it depicts this relationship between these two figures is a little bit surprising or maybe unconventional in that sort of a context. Notice that the woman here is being held really like a delicate object. Look specifically here at the placement of the man's hands and the way that the two couples sort of merge into one another right here. There's no definite boundary between the woman's robe and the man's robe. So the two form sort of this solid geometric shape here which we can see is outlined in yellow, almost as if they're in a sort of halo that isolates them from the rest of the world. So there's this, this sort of innovative balance, I think, of femininity and passion combined with this sort of mutual respect or genuine affection, which is really difficult to explain in words alone. And that's, of course, gets back to this idea of, of symbolism and how art conveys meaning beyond the, uh, the confines of, of language. So I wouldn't say that this painting is blatantly erotic. Um, typically, what's considered to be the most sort of sexual aspect of it is the shape of the couple here is considered to be um, the most blatantly erotic part of the painting. But beyond that, the, the actual relationship that is displayed here is not explicit. And the couple feels authentic, right? It doesn't look forced. And it's also interesting that the woman here is the central figure. We don't even see the face of the man whatsoever, but the face of the woman is really what forms kind of the centerpiece 
of the painting. And of course, this what's going on here is also subject to a lot of different interpretation. We know is the woman enjoying this moment? Has she turned her face away from the man here to try to refuse this kiss? We don't really know. But in any sense, we have this kind of nice combination of yin and yang here, the rectangles on the man's robe, echoed with, as I was discussing before, the, the concentric circles that we see on the woman's robe, and also the, that flower motif being echoed here in the woman's hair, and then again on the ground. So it's sort of a unifying theme through this painting, I would say, is shape or geometry. And note that this flowered ground here really appears to end quite abruptly, right? That the couple is kneeling on, it ends right there. And it's almost as if the woman's feet here, which are emerging from her robe, are dangling on the edge of a cliff. So I think this could represent the precariousness of love or perhaps signify the trust between this, this particular man and woman. And one last little um, piece of information about, about geometry. This idea of shape is really important in a lot of Klimt's works. Rectangles like we see here, as I was discussing before, in the man's robe, or circles. And these types of geometric motifs are really repeated throughout a lot of Klimt's paintings. And actually, one thing that I read once um, about Klimt that I thought was very interesting and very true is that all of Klimt's paintings are actually identical. He's just rearranged the pieces, which I think is very interesting and, and something that's definitely worth thinking about when we look at some of his, uh, some of his paintings.